Hello, my name is Hassan Ahmed and I am a technical marketing engineer for the Cisco SD-WAN product. In this video, we will discuss the configuration using vManage feature template and see a quick demo about the feature. The tracker in the tracker group configuration is present under a system template. For this example, I'm going to use a predefined system template and modify that. For a tracker group to function, two endpoints must be configured under individual trackers and that must be mapped to a tracker group. To do this, go to configuration, click on templates, feature template, search for the existing system template and click on edit. Click on tracker and under the trackers tab, click on new endpoint tracker to define the first endpoint. The tracker name is tracker one and I'm going to change the timers to achieve a faster convergence. In this example, the tracker endpoint time I'm going to use is DNS name. And we're going to track cisco.com as first endpoint. Click on add. Repeat the same step for adding the tracker to. This time we're going to track webex.com. Click on add. Once individual endpoints are defined under trackers, the next step is to map these trackers under a tracker group. Click on tracker groups, click on new endpoint tracker group. I'm giving a name as DIA tracker one and I'm going to call the tracker that were defined in the previous step. And the operation I'm going to use in this example is Boolean and operation. Click add and finally click update. Click on next and configure devices. Once the tracker and the tracker group is configured, the next step is to map this tracker group to the WAN interface. For this, click on configuration, go to templates, feature template, and search for the WAN interface. Once you're in the VPN interface Ethernet template, click on advanced, and under the tracker, provide the tracker name, which is DIA tracker one. Click on update. Click on next and configure devices. In order to check the real-time update, click on monitor, click on devices, go to the respective CH, scroll down and click on real-time. To check the endpoint tracker group status, type in endpoint and click on endpoint tracker group info. So as we can see, we have configured the tracker group name as DIA tracker one, which has tracker one element and tracker two element and both the tracker element status remains up. As a result, the tracker group status or the state remains up. Next, let's see how this feature works and relate it to the table that we discussed earlier and also see how the NATFOL back kicks in if it's configured. In this lab topology, we have got two DIA circuits and one MPLS SD-WAN overlay tunnel. Now let's see the interface configuration. As you can see, we have DIA tracker one, which is bound to the gigabit ethernet one. And this interface has DIA NAT enabled. Similarly on gig two interface, which is the second DIA circuit, this has DIA tracker two, which is a predefined tracker. And this is a single endpoint tracker. Now let's see the show commands for endpoint tracker. Show endpoint tracker records will tell you which tracker is sending probes to what exact endpoints. For example, tracker one is sending probes to cisco.com and tracker two is sending probes to webex.com. This new command show endpoint tracker group will show you the status of the tracker group along with each of the individual elements. And in this case, the tracker group is up and the elements of the trackers are also up. And in order to see the detail about the IP SLA probes that are being sent, you can call out the SLA number, which is the probe ID 24 and hit the detail command. Here we can see that HTTP probes are being sent for that particular destination. This is the policy I'm trying to use for this particular use case where I'm matching a destination 4.2.2 and performing a DINAT. If the DINAT gets disabled, it should fall back to the SD-WAN overlay tunnel. There is a command to check the behavior of the NAT DIA, whether it's enabled or not. And if you hit the command show platform hardware QFP active feature NAT data space space, 
include DIA. It shows me that the NAT DIA is enabled and now the DIA traffic will actually pass through the DIA circuits. And to check if NAT fallback has kicked in, you can issue the command show SDVAN statistics include NAT fallback. Now as we can see, we have 17,200 hits, but this counter is not incrementing, which means that the traffic is not passing through the SD-WAN overlay tunnel. In order to mimic the failover, let's first try to send some packets from the client. Let's see the trace path. And if we notice that second hop, it shows as 172.11.10.2. And this is actually the BIS Internet's IP address. And if we start the ping for the destination 4.2.2, and go over here and check the translation, show IP, not translations for ICMP. We can see that the source 10.10.1.2, which is the client over here, is getting natted to 172.11.10.1. And if we confirm once again, if the traffic is going through NAT fallback, which is negative because the counter has not increased. Now let's fail over to another circuit by shutting down the biz internet traffic. As we can see, the pings have stopped working. Now we can see that we are starting to see timeouts for the probes that we send. And in a few moments, the tracker also will go down. Now we can see that the tracker has gone down. And if we go back to the client, the pings have restarted. Let's see the translation. Now we can see that the source has moved from 11.10.1 and is getting now translated to 172.12.10.1, which is the second DI circuit, which has a color of public internet. Once again, if we confirm if the traffic is going through NAT fallback and still the counter is 17200, which means that the NAT fallback hasn't kicked in. We can also confirm this using the trace path command here. If I do a trace path 4.2.2, here we can see that the next hop is 172.12.10.2, which is actually the next hop of the public internet router. Now to fail over to the MPLA circuit, let's shut down the interface of the public internet router. Start the pings again. Now we can see that the pings have failed. This is the tracker that has been mapped to the gigabit ethernet 2 interface. Once this goes down, NAT should get disabled and then the traffic should get routed through the NAT fallback path. Now we have started seeing the timeouts in the probes. In a few moments, the tracker will go down and the ping should start working through the NAT fallback path. Now we can see that the DI tracker 2 has gone down. Now if you see this command to check if NAT is enabled or disabled, as we can see, the NAT DI is disabled and the other command to confirm if NAT fallback has kicked in. And as we can see earlier, it was 17,200. Now it's increased to 17,221 and it's incrementing. Let's go back to the client and check out the pings. The pings have restarted and let's shut the ping and do a trace route to understand which part it's taking. Now we can see that the traffic is actually going across the far end, which is the data center site, which confirms that the NAT fallback kicked in. As always, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe for latest updates on SD-WAN cloud and networking feature.